gusty midsummer's day, there's nothing so welcome as the sight of water. It's a signal to stop for a meal or a rest, perhaps even to pitch the tent for the night. Look at poor Larry. Tired, Larry? Want to lie down? Yes, that water feels good. Might even chance a swim. But Frank, an expert swimmer and lifesaver, knows the danger of going hot and tired into water. Of course, even Larry has to admit he's right. It's Frank's turn to go for the milk to a farm back up the road. It's Larry's turn to work and Jim's to rest. Larry's heard often enough that he shouldn't swim alone in a strange place or even in a place whose danger he knows. Just a quick tip in and out. He's a pretty good swimmer, but there are some things he doesn't know. Not to dive into a strange river, for instance. He could have broken his neck on the rocks below the surface. Rivers, too, can have treacherous currents, very much stronger than they look, as Larry finds on turning back. Even a strong swimmer begins to tire in conditions like these and is easily affected by other dangers which might have meant little to him when fresh. Give him something he can grip hold of, anything. The towel there, quick! But no, he doesn't think of it. Kick off your shoes, man! Too late. If only he'd taken that life-saving course, he'd have known what to do.
This could be the end of the story, a story which we read in the papers every other day during the summer months. Over a hundred people yearly are drowned on our beaches and in our rivers, lakes and quarries. During a really fine summer, the figure of accidental drownings has reached 146. Over ten years, the total was almost as great as the whole population of the town of Bundorn. The verdict recorded at these inquests is nearly always the same. Death through accidental drowning or through misadventure. But how much of an accident is it when a life can so easily be saved? Can anything be done about these so-called accidents? And if so, by whom? The answer is yes. Many of these lives will be saved. The Department of Local Government has mounted a campaign to provide through local authorities equipment and opportunities for training in swimming and life-saving. Classes in these techniques are organized by the Red Cross and other bodies. These classes can be arranged wherever there is demand for them. But it helps to have a constant depth of water and an even temperature. To have, in fact, a swimming pool. This break of the double neck lock has saved many lives. With financial help from the Department of Local Government, pools like this are now within the reach of local authorities and swimming associations. Indoor pools are the best value for the money, but a lake or river may very cheaply be made safe for bathing. This wooden ramp is recommended as being inexpensive and easy to install. There's no reason why life belts should not be available at all bathing places and warning signs be seen at danger spots on beaches. These signs should be obeyed. They are not intended as coat racks. On the more popular beaches, lifeguards should be in attendance skilled in all rescue techniques, such as the surfboard, which makes rescue work so much less hazardous. Soon he's ready again for the next emergency. Frank first thinks it's a joke. Often a call for help has been treated like that. He knows the right way to enter a strange river. A sprained ankle from jumping onto a rock makes a bad start for a rescue.
Without training in life-saving, it would have been impossible to attempt a rescue here. Any reasonably good swimmer can learn these techniques. Only a few simple rules are necessary to save a life. But how many people take the trouble to learn them? The latest methods of artificial respiration were covered in Frank's life-saving course. Moments like this make Frank glad of what he has learned. And now, what about that tea? Danger lurks in unexpected places. To know how to meet it is half the battle. Each familiar action seems to him as if he were doing it for the first time because he realizes how nearly it was the last time. These two boys are alive because Frank took the trouble to learn the rules of life saving. These rules are so simple that anyone can learn them. Is it too much trouble for you to learn them? Is it too much trouble to save a life?